The European Spallation Source, together with our in-kind partners, are building the world's most powerful accelerator-based neutron source to study matter at the atomic level. The ESS Linear Accelerator, or LINAC, is a 600 meter long particle accelerator and beam transport system where protons are accelerated and steered onto a tungsten target. When high energy proton pulses hit the target, neutrons are released in a process called spallation. Built in collaboration with 13 ESS member countries, the accelerator is a truly international effort. Experts from laboratories and institutions across Europe and beyond have contributed their unique expertise and tailor-made equipment. The state-of-the-art facility has been made possible not only by the technical teams both here and at the in-kind partners, but also all the supporting disciplines, including in-kind management, contracts and procurement, finance, project management, human resources, communications, governance, logistics, and quality licensing and legal experts. It has truly been a remarkable team effort of which the entire project community can rightly be proud. Join us on this exciting journey as we commission the ESS Accelerator, sending protons from the ion source to the tuning beam dump at the end of the accelerator tunnel. The LINAC is housed in a tunnel six metres underground and consists of five sections. A normal conducting section operating at room temperature. A cold section using superconducting technology. A high energy beam transport section dedicated for future upgrades. A dump line which transports the beam to the tuning beam dump. And lastly, the accelerator to target section steering the beam onto the target. It all begins in the normal conducting section at the ion source where plasma is created by stripping electrons from hydrogen atoms. The ion source was built by INFN in Catania, Italy and was delivered to ESS in 2018. The commissioning was supported by expertise from the University of Bergen in Norway and was inaugurated by the Italian President and the King of Sweden. The protons then enter the accelerator where they are bunched and focused. The low energy beam transport built by INFN Italy shapes and guides the beam. The radio frequency quadrupole, a contribution from CEA in France, converts the continuous proton stream into tiny bunches using radio frequency power while also focusing and accelerating the beam. The medium energy beam transport section, contributed by ESS Bilbao in Spain, uses quadrupole magnets and buncher cavities to refine and control the beam shape, while diagnostics devices are integrated to monitor and characterize the beam. The drift tube LINAC, delivered by INFN Italy, uses alternating electric fields to further accelerate the beam. After the drift tube LINAC, the protons enter the superconducting LINAC, where they are accelerated using radio frequency cavities immersed in liquid helium at 2 Kelvin, or minus 271 degrees Celsius. The superconducting LINAC measures approximately 312 meters. It is composed of three types of superconducting radio frequency cavities, spoke, medium beta and high beta elliptical cavities. The double spoke cavities housed in 13 cryo modules were supplied by IJC Lab in France and were pre-tested at Uppsala University in Sweden. In January 2024, during a state visit, French President Emmanuel Macron and the King of Sweden inaugurated the spoke cryo modules. Two sections of elliptical cavities, medium beta and high beta, continue the acceleration. Nine medium beta cryo modules were supplied by CEA in France, each housing four superconducting RF cavities 
supplied by INFN in Italy. 21 high beta cryo modules were also provided by CEA in France, with cavities supplied from STFC in the UK. Five of these are currently installed in the LINAC. Polish in-kind partner IFJ Pan supported testing at the ESS test stand and several installations in the tunnel. When the proton beam exits the last cryo module, it will have already reached its top speed for this commissioning phase of approximately 86% of the speed of light. In the last section, the beam is kept straight and focused with magnets placed at intervals and diagnosed and controlled by beam instrumentation and control systems, all kept within an ultra-high vacuum environment. At a later stage, the beam will be directed towards the target, but for now it goes straight on towards the tuning beam dump. The tuning beam dump is made of copper alloys designed to safely absorb and stop the proton beam. It is enclosed in a shielded structure made of concrete blocks, a contribution from ESS Bilbao in Spain. This was the first in-kind delivery of any type to the ESS site. Along the dump line, there are aperture monitoring equipment co-developed with Lund University in Sweden. An imaging system provided by the University of Oslo in Norway will measure and record the parameters of the beam just before reaching the dump. For the LINAC to operate efficiently, multiple subsystems must work in synchronization. The Klystron gallery runs parallel to the LINAC and houses and operates the power sources for the accelerator, including klystrons, modulators, power stations, waveguides, cooling systems and controls. The radio frequency power system includes 26 RF power stations for the spoke section, delivered by Electra in Italy. Klystrons, powered by modulators, supply the necessary energy through the power couplers to the accelerating cavities in the normal conducting LINAC and the elliptical cryo modules. Further synchronization by the low-level RF system provided by the Polish Electronic Group will enable the tuning of RF cavities and thereby obtain the required beam characteristics. A cryogenic distribution system delivered by IJC Lab in France for the spoke section and Rocklaw University in Poland for the elliptical section supplies liquid helium at 2 Kelvin to the superconducting accelerating cavities. It connects the central accelerator cryoplant with compressors and helium storage tanks all operating in a closed loop. During operation helium is extracted, compressed, liquefied and recirculated the ultra-cold environment enables the niobium cavities to become superconducting, reducing energy losses and maximizing acceleration efficiency. The phase reference line, provided by Warsaw University of Technology in Poland, delivers a stable reference signal to ensure that the RF power in each cavity is properly phase synchronized. This synchronization is essential for the effective acceleration of the particle beam. Beam instrumentation installed along the entire LINAC is essential for monitoring, controlling and optimizing the beam as it makes its journey. It consists of specialized sensors and devices that measure key properties such as the beam's position, intensity, energy and shape. This data ensures that the beam remains stable, safe and precisely aligned. LINAC warm units house magnets to ensure precise beam focusing and guidance along the superconducting LINAC and through the high energy beam transport line towards the beam dump or the target. Each unit is also equipped with vacuum systems and diagnostic devices to preserve beam quality and support performance monitoring. They are the result of the collaboration between ESS and several European in-kind contributors. The magnets were manufactured by Danfisik in Denmark 
and assembled and tested by Electra in Italy. The beam diagnostics instrumentation is from Germany's DAISY. The ionizing profile monitors are from CA in France. And the whole units were assembled and tested at the STFC's Darsbury Laboratory in the UK before being shipped to Sweden. In this way, the LINAC warm units are a great example of the collaborative efforts that drive the accelerator project as well as the entire ESS facility. The ESS accelerator operates under vacuum across the entire system with 500 vacuum components and 1000 connections along the LINAC ensuring a particle-free environment. This vacuum is essential to prevent proton beam scattering instabilities and radiation-induced electrical failures. The ESS Integrated Control System oversees all accelerator operations in an intricate system of millions of control points throughout the machine, including the machine protection system, timing system and personal safety system. The integrated control system connects all devices in the facility into a unified interface for operators that enables safe and efficient operation of ESS from the main control room. Achieving the beam on dump milestone demonstrates that the ESS accelerator is functioning as an integrated system with the proton beam passing from source to dump. It is the culmination of years of design, installation and integration and represents a major success for the entire ESS community. We will then set our sights on the next major milestone, beam on target. Once high energy proton pulses are steered onto the tungsten target, ESS will produce its first neutrons, entering into a new era of scientific discovery. We invite you all to be part of the exciting future at ESS as we continue on the road to science.